When I went through BUDS training in the Navy, Navy SEAL training, BUDS basic underwater demolition, uh, my class, like uh, almost every class that goes through, had foreign guys in it. We had two special forces guys from Singapore, Army guys, that went through. They were already qualified in their country. And we had two Thai Navy SEAL officers that went through. They were already Navy SEAL qualified in their own country. And both of those countries, uh, that training there is no joke. Why they would elect to come through uh, BUDS training, I don't know. Uh, but they did. And happy lucky guys they just they just they were just fantastic and to be around but the class favorite was Komen Winai and uh, Mikey we called him we nicknamed him Mikey Winai he was the happiest little Thai uh, seal out there he was an officer he was a lieutenant junior grade and uh, the instructors showed the other country special forces guys and their respect that we certainly did not get they'd already been through there so they had to do everything we did but they just treated them a lot differently so mikey could get away with shit and we used to teach mikey all these uh, phrases and sayings he'd never heard to screw around with the instructors and one of them was die american dog and uh, gi tonight you die and so these are coming from old movies in Vietnam and Korea where they'd scream at the uh, Americans, you know, G.I., tonight you die, or die, American dog. And he would say that to the instructors when he would, they'd tell him to do something, and he'd start leaving to do it, and he would say that, and they'd all look at each other and go, what the hell did he just say? <laughs> and we would get such a kick out of him. He's just a, just a great, solid dude. He was just happy to be there and motivated the whole entire class with his... Uh, just never-ending smile. And me and Mikey got to be uh, close friends in Hell Week. So they would take us over to the pool and just beat the absolute shit out of us in that uh, extraordinarily cold water all night long of doing nothing. Me, I didn't do anything except backflips off of the high dive and would just splat every time. You know, They would find something and just torture us over there. And they, after hours of this just freeze, we had such a brutal cold Hell Week. Uh, the instructor said, congratulations, guys, well done, you guys kick an ass, go down and take a shower, get a hot shower, guys, you earned it. And that whole class blew down those stairs at NAB Coronado to get a whole a hot shower, They're just, we're just dying. Except two guys, me and Mikey, I smelled bullshit and so did he. And we're sitting there just tight as ticks, just trying to get warm, me and Mikey and stuff. And we were allowed this one time in, uh, for Hell Week to buy these boxer shorts, these silk boxer shorts to wear to cut down on the chafing. And Mikey's, you got a pee hole where you can put your wiener through there in the front. His pee hole is in his butt. His underwear is on backwards. And I went, hey, 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 you dumb fucking tie. You got your, you got your underwear on backwards there. And he went, no chafe, no chafe. And when he said that, I thought, oh, shit. My junk had been spilling out of the front of those boxer shorts uh, the entire time we'd been going through Hell Week. All the runs, all the PT in the, in the sand, all the boat evolutions. My stuff is just rubbing all over my zipper, on my pants, and that, uh, the material there. It looked my dick looked like a, a baby's arm holding an apple. That's how bad, it was just swollen, bloody, uh, uh, scabbed up mess. And uh, I went, damn, I'm wearing my underwear the right way, but I'm wearing it the wrong way. And we got a big ass laugh out of that, you dumb ass tie. And uh, it didn't take very long before the instructors rousted all those morons that went down there to take the shower, sent them all back up and straight in that cold ass pool. And there was a bunch of them that did not come back. We're, we're done. We quit. So uh, we made it through. Uh, we made it through buds, and uh, everybody, everybody loved Mikey. And when I got to SEAL Team One, my platoon deployed to Thailand for a, a big exercise over there. We always were very close with the uh, Thai SEALs, and they had a SEAL Team One. They put through one buds class a year, which exact mock up of uh, our training in Coronado. That's how close we are. This is, and they had a SEAL Team One, one team, SEAL Team One, 
And guess who the commanding officer was? Mikey Winai. And uh, there were three other guys in my platoon that had gone through buds with Winai. And so it was just, just a big reunion. He's now the commanding officer. Every, all the other Thai SEALs, which are great, Thai SEALs are fantastic guys. They're rough, rough boys. You wouldn't want to be tied to a tree after being taken prisoner by those guys with them sitting around a fire wondering what they're going to do to you next. But, oof. But they're just the happiest guys, motivated. We just had so much fun with these guys. And they, their SEAL Team 1 is on an island off the coast of Thailand. You've got to take a boat to get there, which means nobody can hear you scream. Nobody screws around with those guys. They get to do what they want. And Mikey at the helm, this, uh, this SEAL Team 1 guy, uh, commander. So there's always this language barrier that goes on when you're dealing with any foreign nations. If you don't speak good Thai and they don't speak good English, you're doing the pidgin English stuff, you're doing a lot of shit with your hands and stuff, and it usually works out, but there's always that language barrier. And our language barrier came when they told us we're going to do survival training, jungle survival training. We don't have a lot of jungles in America, so this was a kick. Okay, let's let's go. I was so excited. We're gonna spear some monkeys. We're gonna catch some fish because they are masters at uh, working in the jungle. They when you're patrol with them, they're always picking shit off of the trees and putting it in their pockets. These peppers, these little fruit things, bananas. You can learn so much from them. They're so talented like that, and that's what we think we're gonna do. So we patrol all day long through this steaming ass beautiful jungle. A bunch of them and my entire platoon, and we get to this beautiful place, hours we're humping through. And we start setting up our hammocks. I mean, that's all basically we brought. And those guys start boiling rice, and they're adding fish to it, and we're just sitting there going, we don't have any food, we're starving over here. We're, we're really hungry, we didn't bring anything. And we thought that was what the point of this whole thing was. And uh, quickly, Mikey recognizes what happened. Now, he's the commanding officer. He's got better shit to do. He relies on his uh, guys to make shit like this happen. He lines those clowns up and goes nuts that they missed the translation for, you got to bring this or you ask for that and we'll take it out. And we didn't have anything to eat. He lines them up at perfect attention and starts slapping and kicking the shit out of all of them, yelling. Boom, boy, he went nuts. And we're just like, Ooh, I had never seen Mikey go anything but happy. And now he is going nuts on these uh, Thai seals in the middle of the jungle. And out of nowhere, two of them just take off. And I thought, oh my God, he's going to shoot them. They're going to they're gonna kill these two guys who are deserting going through. Well, it was something Mikey told them to, to get the F out of here. Go. And they just took off. So all those Thai seals that he'd been screaming at sit down and they don't move and then we just ease down in the jungle too and we just sat there going we don't know what to do nobody is saying anything and this went on for several hours and then all of a sudden here these two dickheads come back through the jungle and between them they're carrying this big ass ammunition box and on top of their heads are these wicker baskets with these big holes in it and every hole had a chicken's head stuck out of it all these chickens, look at these two baskets, they got them on their head. And they bring them down and they, they kill all the chickens. They show us how to kill the chickens. They don't eat the head and they don't eat the butt. That's the only thing that gets thrown away. The feet are eaten, all the intestines are, they would take the intestines with a bamboo sliver and cut them and then and wash them out and then cut all that up. Everything was eaten on that and we porked out, man. We, I mean, we were really hungry. We devoured those chickens. So what's in the ammo box? They open that ammo box, this Thai chief is there, and it is a huge, huge cobra. I don't mean a small one, it is a huge black cobra. I don't know where they got the damn thing from, but they had it. And so we think this Thai chief is going to show us something, you know, about dealing with cobras. You know, we're expecting this mystical shit. He just pulls up this big stick and beats the shit out of that thing until it's dead. And then they cut it all up. We uh, cooked it over the fire, and we ate cobra, and we ate chicken, and we just had a great time out there. Got up the next morning and extracted. We would do stuff with them uh, all the time. Fantastic, fantastic uh, guys. 
Mikey went on to become uh, Vice Admiral Wenai. Komen Wenai, a Vice Admiral. And he got into a, a jam uh, over a coup in Thailand. He was kind of head of. I can't make really heads or tails of exactly what it was, uh, but became a political prisoner, was arrested for that stuff, and retired uh, over it. And the head of naval special warfare. I can tell you this about Mikey Wanai, that as well as I know him and knew him, uh, whatever side he fell on, if he thought it was the right side, so whatever he decided, you know, we need to overthrow uh, this government, he was on the right side of that. There was something going on. He was not a, uh, uh, a trigger-happy uh, guy that would just take headshots really quick. He was a very calculated, uh, very, very good officer. And uh, after that whole charade of uh, doing that, Mikey uh, retired, got out of the Navy, and he, uh, he works on his farm in Thailand. And that's, that's just what he does now. He still looks great and just a happy, happy, happy guy. One of my favorite memories in SEAL training and SEAL team was going through buds with Thai Navy SEALs, specifically Mikey and working with Thai Navy SEALs. And we did a lot of stuff with those guys. We were very, very close. Navy SEALs and Thai SEALs, we deployed with them. We would work with them Australia and Guam. We'd do all kinds of stuff with those guys. 